Hello, Sovereign Lovers. Hello, happy Thursday. <laughs> happy Thursday evening. <laughs> we just finished up a ceremony. We're here on the beach in Coney Island. It is a beautiful evening. It's a little chilly, but it's a beautiful evening. And we just held a rapé ceremony facilitated by my lovely wife. <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit about the ceremony itself? And then we can talk about why we decided to do this? Um, sure. So, uh, rapé is, um, it's sacred tobacco. Um, the one we're using is from Brazil. It's uh, native to Brazil. And it is, um, rapé is used ceremonial ceremonially to clear out um, energies specifically because it goes through your nose up through your head it feels like it goes up through your head um, it balances out your chakras and helps bring clarity um, sometimes it's a little bit intense <laughs> um, it's definitely intense for me yeah um, I um, I don't know would you call it I don't feel like it's psychoactive it's not psychoactive mm -hmm. but it is clearing and it certainly opens up the, that crown chakra or you can feel it um, in your crown chakra specifically um, so yeah I mean that's what I, I think that's what I have to say about that um, so recently I've you know we we sat with Rempe for the first time in Peru back in 2019 and it was not my favorite experience um, because it can be a little bit intense. Um, and then I didn't sit with Rappe again until October of last year when I was at a, a retreat in Mexico. And then recently I had a dream uh, about Rappe and it was very much um, calling me. It's been calling me to work with it and I had so much resistance to it because it's so uncomfortable and like I said it's not really the most um, not my favorite uh, medicine to work with but um, when the medicine calls you it's kind of hard to say no um, or I feel like it's hard to say no <laughs> um, so yes I, I a month ago I received my um, my curipe and my um, I believe it's a tepi um, to administer the rapé and uh, and I received my rapé as well. It's right there. And I, this is the curipe, and the other one is in the little bag. Um, and even though I received it about a month ago, I was very afraid uh, to to try it, um, to work with it. I was afraid of um, of not knowing the right way to do it, of not being. Um, you know, and, and this is for my own practice. Um, I like to be as impeccable as possible. I like to be connected with the medicine and I, I like to make sure that I'm not just randomly doing it um, without feeling the proper guidance. Um, and I think two days ago was when I finally <laughs> worked up the courage to do it and after uh, much research and and really asking for guidance um, I think for me a lot of times I also I receive a lot of guidance in my dreams so I a couple of nights ago when I finally was like okay I need to start doing this I feel it I, I am really feeling the call to do this I did set the intention in my dreams in my sleep state to receive the guidance for how to do this and um, and I, I chose to trust myself and so um, it was two nights ago we we did it for the first time um, ourselves and it's been a really interesting experience um, do you want to talk about how why we did it why we did it today hi Rena hi Rena <laughs> um, we've uh, I specifically have been having a lot of resistance and struggle with shame and worthiness so recently for those who don't know I was injured at work and decided to close my construction company permanently to go full-time into psychedelic relationship coaching which is something that we have been doing for a while 
um, not truly professionally, but um, you know, as an act of service. And now we would like to move more into um, our professional life being an act of service. And so I've had a lot of shame because th- th- things are financially tight right now. You know, closing a successful business was an act of faith for me. And now the financial constriction has brought up, brought up a lot of feelings of shame. Like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have done this. Are you crazy? You know, you had this successful business and you were able to support your family and now you're taking this risk and maybe you're being selfish taking this risk and closing your business so that you could have your dream job of being a psychedelic relationship coach. Like what kind of crazy, you know, like, like pie in the sky kind of nonsense, nonsense is that, mm-hmm. right? Get your ass back to work and support your family. Stop with this, this, these dreams, you know, living your dreams. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Um, so I've been dealing with some of that. There's also feelings of failure. Like I failed to have a backup plan. I failed to have cash reserves to help support us through this transition. Um, I feel irresponsible sometimes. Yes, Serena says that's the ego talking trash for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so these are some of the feelings. And, you know, ultimately it all comes back to worthiness and I really struggled with this today and I felt really depressed and just stuck and unable to really focus on building the business and building the spiritual practice that is, you know, walks hand in hand with the business. We really think of Sovereign Love, our business, as its own entity in a way. Like, its own spirit its own spirit and so we're in service to love to sovereign love and really for us the concept of sovereign love is it's kind of like a, I, don't know, I don't want to call it a cliche but you know we say that god is love and so we're in service sovereign love is really for us god and us being in service to god in our very specific and special way that we can offer that we can allow god to flow through us in a very, you know, um, individual way, right? We all have our gifts and we all allow God to flow through us in a very um, unique way. And so sovereign love is the manifestation of our coming together as a couple and allowing God to flow through us. So how can I think that that was crazy, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's a beautiful thing. But I think that sometimes, right, the the fears, um, it's really interesting because just now we were pulling cards at the end of our ceremony and I pulled the death card. And um, it was, it's really interesting because the death card talks about how how we fear the unknown. We fear, uh, we're afraid of death. We're afraid of ending something that feels familiar because then what comes next, right? And and if we don't know what comes next, we don't have, we, it's very easy to have faith when you know what's coming next, right? <laughs> That's not really faith. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. But a lot of us kind of see it that way. Yes, I have faith if I know what's coming next, right? If I can trust what's coming next. So the idea of, of this is having, taking a leap of faith and not knowing what comes next and not knowing how we're going to make ends meet, but trusting that what we're doing is really from the heart and we are being of service. Um, and so I also felt it was really special for us to come back to ceremony. This is what we want to offer to people. This is what we want to remind people of that there's, we can always tap back into that sacredness. So why wouldn't we do that when we're going through a difficult moment? Um, and that was kind of what inspired tonight's ceremony. Yeah. So we came to the beach and I think it was really like, I, we didn't really kind of think about it, but, or I certainly didn't. It was kind of like, oh yeah, the beach is a nice place. Let's, let's go. It'll be relaxing. We can walk on the beach. And then Vanessa was like, let's have a ceremony in the beach. And I was like, okay. And now we're here and the wind was supporting us, helping us move energy. The ocean, the water was supporting us with encouraging the wind to help (laughs) us move energy. 
We burned some sweet grass, so the fire element was here with us, and the earth. We, when you, um, when you take rapé, for those who don't know, it's um, a powdered tobacco, and the pipes that Vanessa showed you earlier, you blow it up into your nose, and you inhale it, and then there's a lot of purging, so you're, you're going to be spitting and, and coughing up the things that you're purging out. Um, and so then the earth received us purging. So we were supported by all four of the elements and we invoked our ancestors to, and guides and our higher selves to guide us through this. And the feeling when the, when the tobacco first hits your nostrils is intense. There's like this burning and it's so strange because you do one nostril at a time and you actually feel the burning just on one side of your, your face. And, but after, after that burning feeling subsided, I closed my eyes and my intention for the ceremony was to, I had heard today on a, on a podcast about how we have our, our energy centers. So the throat chakra and above the um, third eye and crown chakra connect to heaven and our solar plexus down, uh, the sacral and the root connect to the earth. And the heart is kind of in the middle. And this, this healer was saying that when we can master bringing the energies from our chakras and meeting them together in our heart, that that is, that helps us get into balance. And so, yeah, (laughs) right. The feminine and the masculine, the eagle and the condor. The, um, so that was my intention. So after I took the rapé, I closed my eyes and imagined the light coming down and the earth supporting me and kind of creating uh, the Kundalini flow of the energy circulating through my chakras up to my heart, down to my heart, and then circulating around in that kind of Kundalini um, Taurus. And I felt this feeling of peace and relaxation wash over me and it really it was really a a a very healing moment for me just the feeling of the peace Mm -hmm. was very healing after me struggling today with depression and dense dense feelings and dense emotions and just like ah just feeling so stuck and I felt so much lighter afterwards almost a little dizzy Mm -hmm. Um, but it was it was a beautiful feeling yeah um Rena says it's it's awful (laughs) it's really it's it's it takes some getting used to because it it can be very intense the feeling of when the the tobacco shoots up your nose and it feels like it like burns all the way to the top of your head Um, but it's clearing up all of that um, that energy it's clearing up that density all of the confused thoughts right when all of that is shooting up like you you can't think (laughs) what could you possibly think about in that moment um yeah that's true it almost makes you it 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 almost clears you (laughs) forces you to become present yeah um and so it's really fascinating um the the feeling of it right how that feeling can just wipe everything out and bring you back into that state of presence and for me i feel like you know this is a time when we're struggling with with our emotions when we're we're in cancer season so this is all about the emotions all about um you know the waters the flowing emotions and we can get really caught up in that and we have so many tools available to uh, available to us and not everybody has to sit with rape not everybody has to sit with cacao not everybody has to sit with uh, mushrooms or cannabis or any other thing it's it's coming back to presence and these tools are helpful right these are the tools that our ancestors use these are the tools that um the earth has provided for us um but even if um even if those tools aren't available to us all of nature is here to support us and like danny said tapping into the energy of the water of the wind of the earth of the fire it 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 created this awareness that we are supported at all times by all of the elements by 
by all of the seasons, right? Even even the cancer season with all of its, its emotions is here to support us, right? We're meant to experience the emotions, to flow through the emotions. And sometimes we have so much resistance. And I think rape is one of those medicines that kind of helps push you through that resistance. I mean, it literally is forcing <laughs> its, <laughs> its way through all of the density and the congestion, like, like Rena says, it clears the sinuses for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel really grateful that we chose to do this, um, that we're on this path and that this medicine has called to me and, and to us <laughs> at this point, um, that we can do this, this, these things together. And I think that has become our practice, right? To connect with the tools that are available to us that in a moment of frustration, we're not like, ah, oh, I'm frustrated. Let me just sulk in in my frustration let me just sit in my frustration and let me and put on the tv let me eat let, let me, me distract myself from yeah it. yeah and instead let's let's look at the tools that we have available to us and let's sit with them let's let's bring sacredness to those emotions right let's honor those emotions by working through them by giving them a space to exist by giving them a space to show us what we're meant to learn from them and you know that having those emotions today allowed Danny to recognize where is this coming from oh these are feelings of unworthiness these are feelings of shame how can I work through these right and then coming into ceremony bringing those emotions into ceremony and setting intentions for them helps us process and work through it and hold space for those emotions right they don't have to stay with us they're just visitors and we can have a ceremony for our visitors and welcome them and say, okay, what are you here to teach us visitors? Yeah. And then allow them to flow through and, and serve their purpose. And Rena, we're so honored to be on this path with you as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I am. Um... And we had that fairy energy with us as well. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, for me, it's very hard in the moment to think of my emotions as teachers. I get swept up in them and you know like today I was kind of sulking for most of the day and just kind of sitting in it but you know it's part of the process and part of my path and one of the things that I realized while we were setting intentions for the ceremony was I'm a big picture kind of guy oh before I get into that I just want to say that to me the burning and the the kind of harshness of inhaling the tobacco it's kind of like a miniature crucifixion or like going into the underworld, going into the darkness. Mm -hmm. And then when you get through it, you have that feeling of peace again. There's the resurrection uh, again. So I'm, I tend to be a big picture kind of guy and I don't like looking at the details. I just want, I want to get to the finished picture, right? But I don't want to take the time for each brush, each little brush stroke. Um, and that is the fairy that showed up for me. Um, Geo the Slow, his name is, which is a reminder to slow down. And so what I tend to want to do is go right to the heart. Okay, what am I feeling? And what's the core trauma or the core wound or, or whatever it is? Like, let's get down to the foundation. And if I can pull out that foundational brick, the whole wall of resistance crumbles. And what Vanessa reminded me of is that each one of the bricks in that wall of resistance has to be looked at and sat with each brick is an emotion and that may be tied to some specific trauma or an aspect of a trauma but each brick needs to be sat with and and worked through individually one by one in a slow deliberate manner in an intentional manner and i can be patient for that and not just want to get rid of the whole wall knock the wall down so i can you know be jesus right now you know or be enlightened um, and so Geo the Slow showed up and reminded me to take it one step at a time, slow down, and look at each of those those emotions, sit with them, and release them one at a time without trying to take it all on at once. And that's why I feel like I get so um, frustrated and bogged down by those emotions. So I hope that this our experience can help someone else on their path and, and provide some valuable perspective do you have anything else to share um no i think that was beautiful um i 
I think that, yeah, if this is a reminder, especially during this season where so many emotions come up, instead of trying to push them away, let's sit with them, let's invite them to, to show us what what they come to show us, right? Our emotions are our guidance system, and when they show up, there's something that we need to look at. So this is an invitation for you to sit with some of those emotions, connect to your tools, what tools do you have available? You know, going out and sitting by a tree or grounding, um, you know, connect with the tools available to you. Is it tarot? Is it oracle decks? Is it, um, you know, sitting... Is it a with, walk on the beach? Is it a walk on the beach? Yeah. What, whatever tools are available to you, whatever tools you connect with the most, um, bring them in and invite your guests, your emotions to come sit with those tools and process, you know, allow them to work together. Um, I think that's my big takeaway for tonight. Beautiful. <laughs> we love you. We love you, Rena. Thank yes. you for sitting with us through this ceremony. And we love everyone else who was watching this in the future. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Have a beautiful evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Up here. <laughs>